What's going on, everybody? Uh, we're talking about the NFL divisional round. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, as I was just talking with Sheets about beforehand, I guess, you know, we have the, the the main slate being the four gamer, which going back to the old days of DFS is what it feels like. We don't, you don't, we don't get this every, every time anymore. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, Sheets, any overall thing before we jump into it? I, I know that you've reiterated some, some really good points that to take those sort of nothing guys is, is really not worth it in the playoffs as much. Like, I agree with it. But any any take on this particular slate? Well, first of all, just some uh, announcements or whatever. So as as I did last season, and what I'm doing now as as well, is you know this is the last four game slate. Um, uh, everything after that is the two games or the or, or the Super Bowl. So I, I'm going to be playing everything. I'll be playing the four gamer. I'll be playing both two game slates and all four showdowns. So yep. you can expect to see all that stuff. And uh, as as you remember, that that worked out just fine last week. <laughs> with the yes. show, way to show down so I never would have played otherwise. If it there you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't. I'm, I'm, ne I'm never criticizing your process if that's what if that's the yeah, result. It's, yeah. it's more like the OCD process. I want to play everything. The four two one 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 one. You know, it's nice and easy. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, I I I, I would re reiterate that with one caveat. So, um, I, you know, I don't want really want to play all the nonsense guys, especially in the playoffs, but. When you get something like last week where um, where McKenzie was ruled out, I, I I wasn't expecting that actually. I guess I should have expected it. Mm -hmm. Didn't really affect it too much, but but I I really should have probably. I don't even know if he did anything, but I probably should have played more Shakir as a result of that. Well, uh, well I, Shakir I, dropped a big pass, but Beasley did catch the touchdown. Um, I did have Beasley in the in the showdown, but not in the classic. I should have remember, right, I should right. have remembered to do that. Um, so we have to we do have to to to, to see what the Buffalo situation is, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, in general, this is, you know, I know you, you came up with them last week a little, a little, but I mean, to me, this is not the the time to play like Jamal Agnew, you know, on, on the classic, you know what I mean? Like I'll, right. I'll play it maybe in the showdown or something like that, but I'll go yeah. with the, with the, with the regular guys. Yeah. Um, Al, so let's, let's just go right after we can go game by game here. So, but before we do that, um, you know, it is a two game slate with, 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 with breaks between all four. And I, I wonder if, again, we should, all else being equal, just try to defer if possible. Now, it might not be possible, but but in the way I looked at the slate, I looked at all the games had, you know, guys that you could play. And I wasn't sure, like, which ones. Like, uh, if you're thinking about, like, for example, like Cincinnati, you want to play T. Higgins or Chase. I don't think you want to play both, like, for example. You know, and similarly, Buffalo, do you want to play Diggs or, or Davis? I'm not sure. Uh, on Dallas, do you want, you know what I mean? Like, and even even with, with Jacksonville and not so much Jacksonville, but even the Giants, I mean, like, all those guys look like to be good plays, but you, you really want to play like three of them or something like that. So I think that if you push push it out a little bit, you can make determinations based on how you're doing for which guys you play. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, I think that the least – I don't want to say least appealing game. It's kind of, I don't know. Every game, every game's got got dudes, man. You know, you yeah. got it's it's funny. I was thinking about this in terms of Kansas City. So how many times do you see this? So you see Kansas City with the highest team total of the eight teams. And I, I think that they have the worst, I would say worst, like the worst, you know, choices at wide receiver and the worst choices at running back. You know what I mean? Like, and the team itself has the highest team total. You know, right. it's, it's, uh, what do you, you know, so it's, 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 it's really, really interesting. Um, so I guess we can start with this first game. It's his first game. Well, I just, let's, I just let's pull up your screen and we'll go. Oh, we'll go sorry. Through. I don't even know. No, no, you're good. So, so, I mean, I, I imagine that these Jacksonville guys are going to look good, right? I mean, like, like Christian, uh, they, were, they, they didn't make any adjustments on any of this, like the Giants receivers, the, the Jacksonville receivers. You could still get Zay Jones at 4,700 for some reason. You could get Marvin Jones as kind of a punt at 3,600. You would get Evan Engwin, who was just freaking just on fire, like the whole season pretty much, right, at only 4,300 in a game where at best, I mean, at worst, they're, they, they, they don't play that well, and then they're in freaking comeback mode, which, which is what you want. And if they're competitive, it's going to be high scoring anyway. You know, I, I, and, and then you have Etienne, who, again, I mean, I think it's – I think all these Jacksonville skill guys are incredibly in play. And I honestly like, like them more than any of the KC guys, just because again, I just, I'm just not sure what Kansas city is going to do. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I know what they're going to do. They're going to say, you know, you know, they'll, they'll create some cool plays and 
Patrick, you know, do your thing. And I'm sure Patrick will put up, you know, three touchdowns or something like that. I just don't know where, where they're going. Um, so uh, you could play Kelsey, but do you, do you really want to play Kelsey at 7,700? I don't know. Maybe you do. So for me, it's kind of probably a little dangerous. I'm probably just going to play like Jacksonville guys. Might end up just fading the Kansas City side. Not because I don't think they're going to score. Just because I don't think, I don't know. I just don't know who I want to play. Yeah, so you have a really unusual, and you just sort of nailed it, like a very unusual game because you have Mahomes who's projected to be, I believe, on your projections. I think he's the highest projected on quarterback with no receivers that are getting right. much ownership. <laughs> like, right. And then right. you get all the ownership on the Jacksonville guys, and you have a quarterback who's getting no ownership. Right. So, I first of all, I like Trevor Lawrence in a Jacksonville stack. I absolutely have no problem going with that. Um, yeah. We've already seen this team put up points against KC before. We, we've seen them, you know – they obviously have a boom bust style considering the way the last week worked out was the third biggest comeback in NFL history. Um, I, I like the idea with Lawrence and I, and I, and I like the receivers. I I'm, I'm higher on obviously in, in order. I have Zay Jones, then Kirk just because of the pricing, but Marvin Jones, I don't mind getting a little bit of exposure to. And I, and I really like him. And then on the other side, I, I, you know, I, I like, I like I always want to play the Mahomes, the Kelsey stack in the playoffs and, all that, but I, I think I might be better off making a big stack with Jacksonville and using the uh, forcing in some of the the other stuff on the other side. Kelsey is is expensive, so that's a decision worth making. I think that he's a, a really solid play anyway. And obviously, Juju's the the most reliable of the receivers, but maybe without the flash, it doesn't seem when you just put him versus Zay Jones that uh, Zay Jones just scores more fantasy points than he does in general. Um, I think getting to a little bit of Canarius Tony and even Justin Watson as, as get weird plays is probably worth it, but I'm, I'm not like prioritizing those guys. So I think that the Juju and, and some of that depends on whether McCole Hardman plays or not, just because it's just, uh, just another guy. They just have a lot of guys. Um, but I have Kelsey um, Juju and I don't care how bad he's been at times. Mark Val Valdez Scantling in that order on the other side, but I do like the stack right off the bat. And I like the Jag side of it. I, I, you mentioned uh, ATN. I really like him. And I have no problem playing Jared McKinnon. I, I am not in, I am have no issue with it whatsoever. I don't care about people go, well, he only has these plays and they all just are touchdowns. Well, th th there's a reason. They, they, they look for him near the goal line. The guy's had a touchdown now and what? He's had at least one in six straight weeks. So he's eight touchdowns in six weeks. Um, I, he's become like Mahomes' Kelsey a little bit. Like he's put up 230 games. He's cheap enough. I think that this is an interesting way of, of, of doing it. And I and not that you're going to be totally off the board, but I just don't think people are playing the Jacksonville side of it. So I think this game right off the bat is a really nice game stack that I will definitely uh, at first look is, is definitely, you know, one of my, if not my total priority, I'm just not as high on Pacheco, but he is cheap and the game script certainly suits him better than it would McKinnon. Um, I have a feeling the Jacksonville plays him tough though. So that's where I'm at. Well, so let's talk about that, by the way, I do think, well, Let's talk about Saturday games first. I, I do as we transition into the Philly game. Yeah. As far as against the spread goes, I mean, I've just I've just seen this a bunch in my 50 million years, like watching sports and gambling and stuff like that. And and these teams, these number one seeds coming off buys are just really, really tough to beat. They just are. Um, especially with teams coming off of pretty freaking emotional games the week before. I mean, Jacksonville, first of all, very happy to be in the playoffs in the first place, as were the Giants, right? Jacksonville had a miraculous, just awesome win. You know what I mean against Jack, against Jack, against the Chargers, as did the Giants, right? Against Minnesota, um, I think both teams are just going to lose. I, I think Kansas City and Philly are very safe. Um, I don't know about the spread, but listen, here's something I don't recommend ever. This is like so obvious. I'm sure that I'm sure that Vegas is going to be a bunch of action on this. If you wanted to do a two teams two team teaser with with Casey and Philly, you can get them both to under three points. You know, um, and and they'll just both teams just have to win by a field goal pretty much or maybe even like two points. That seems pretty freaking safe, you know, uh, against teams in this spot. So uh, I I know it's tempting to play these underdogs, you know, when, when it looks like a big spread, especially when they just show that they can win the week before. But in my my experience, it's just a much it's a much tougher road than you than people would think. There are some teams that can come off of the, the no buy and beat teams off the buy, but that's usually very, very rare. I mean, first of all, there's a reason why these two teams have the buy. Right? They are the two best teams. Um, and 
you know, these teams coming off of, a, of the game the week before, it's a big disadvantage. So I actually do like both favorites here. I do like Kansas City. And unfortunately, I do like uh, Philadelphia against the Giants, uh, both against the spread. I think for those of you counting, though, Sheets is really good with these picks. But he, I'm telling you where you've been, when you've been, the one mistake you've had, you've always, you always are against your Giants. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like you talk about how the Giants aren't going to win. No, no, no. Uh, but the, uh, um, and, and the other thing, by the way, I do like uh, in, 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 a, in a bet that just can't win. And, you know, I love betting the games that bets just can't win. Uh, I, I do like uh, Jacksonville Casey to go under. So we'll uh, – We'll see what happens there. Um, so let's let's move on to the Giants Phillies. So let's what is where they like Jacksonville to cover? You do okay. Yeah. So so let's talk about this. So Giants Philly. Um, so here it is. We have a dollar. I think you're up on me for the playoffs. So we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> I'll try to try to get my dollar back. I'll take I'll take KC minus the points. I I, um, I I think it's okay. So I, I just want to say one quick thing about KC. Mahomes is the reason why this team is the best team in football. And I know that sounds like oh okay big deal. You know the quarterback's the best. No, that's a weird thing because, like, if you look at this Chiefs team, they have a lot of flaws that, for, that, that yes. you know, for teams Absolutely. that tend, tend to – for teams that have the best record, that that no team's ever been like this bad against the spread for a team yeah. with the best record in the league. There's a lot of things that they that, that sort of scare you a little bit with them. And that, and I think that are, are real issues that Mahomes sort of covers up. And I do that's think true. that could be an issue for a startup team like Jacksonville who could get things going quickly. And that's a good point. Is that, that's, a, that's just my personal take on it, but – I also wouldn't be surprised if it was 35 to three. <laughs> like, um, uh, all right. So Giants, Philly, again, so the Giants, and listen, they've, they've, they've outperformed, first of all, they've outperformed their power rating the whole season, right? I mean, every, every week left, Giants are going to regress, Giants are going to regress, but you know, they're very well coached. They, they play very well in close games. They have, they're good play calling and they overcome, you know, a real, a real lack of offensive skill. You know what I mean? Like skilled players, uh, you know, Daniel Jones is fine. Barkley has been, been fine, but they've had no receivers and yet they've been able to get just enough done. They've defensively been just enough to get done. They've gotten it done in, in a very, very weak schedule. Um, and uh, they got a perfect matchup. We talked about this. The only team we that we thought were, were more overrated than the Giants were the Vikings. We thought the Vikings were just like like dead team. We all thought that. And you knew you were, you were on that from like week four, you know? Right. Um, and so I wasn't particularly surprised. I think the Giants are going to have a little problem in this problem in this game. As you mentioned also before week one, it is not just Jalen Hurts. You know what I mean? Like this team is totally freaking loaded. And, and more than probably any team, like they relished that. For, they didn't even one week off. They really had pretty much four weeks off. You know what I mean? Like they, 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 yep. they've been doing their best to get ready for the playoffs. Okay? Yep. They did just enough to get this by and they're, re they're ready to go. You know, and, and and they're home, and I think they're gonna. I think the Giants gonna have a big problem here. Well, none, nonetheless, um, whether they have a big problem or not, they have uber cheap receivers. Okay, in a good game script where you could use them, and you have a quarterback that you know is not ashamed to tuck it under his under his under his uh under his arm and run. Okay, and th those are good things for fantasy. So I do like pretty much all the, the cast of characters, the Giants, uh, Slayton. Uh, Hodgins, uh, 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 James, and Daniel Jones. I don't think Barkley is going to have too much success in this game, although it's weird, weird because we've seen teams run against Philly. So yeah. maybe that's a stupid thing for me to say. Considering, again, that like there's not that the, – the running backs on this slate, I, I, you know what, I, I guess they're pretty good. McCaffrey – yeah, so I don't know the Barkley thing. I'm not, not, not. I don't know about, but with all those Giants receivers, they're just too cheap to not play. And on the Philly side, I mean, uh AJ Brown, he's just a freaking beast, you know. I, uh, Devontae Smith's a beast. I don't know how much they're going to have to get pushed to, to, to really put the throttle on. That's that's the only problem with with, with the Philly with the Philly situation here. I mean, I almost kind of rather just like have more exposure to maybe the Cincinnati Buffalo game. We'll get to that later, but yeah, they all look really good. And you want to know why they look really good? Cause they're the number one team in the NFC and they have good players. That's mm -hmm. why they, that's why they look good. You know, that's why, Oh, who's this receiver? I don't know him. Yeah. Because if your team's not in the playoffs, we know these guys because they win every game. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely think these giants are good. I wouldn't play more than one. I'd probably just pick one of them. I don't think like Daniel Jones got particularly good enough games where he could get like a touchdown pass to maybe three of them or anything like that. So I don't know. I, I do like them as, as filler pieces. Um, and I don't know what to do about Jalen Hurts. Um, I, I just, 
I think I would just prefer like in, in a similar similar spot, I guess, to play maybe Josh Allen, you know. Um, but I don't know. Uh, so I guess that's a little bit wishy washy. But I, I guess the, I guess the take from it is I think I like the Giants cheapos, and uh, that's my priority, I guess. Yeah, I, th- I think that I mean it makes sense what you're saying. Like, um, I, like Goddard, I think is my favorite. Like a lot right with Ingram, oh, wow. my favorite tight ends on the on the slate. Um, I actually think Philly will come out and, and just try to put a hammer a hammer down if they can. Yeah, I, think, I think it's I don't think they're going to be messing around. I I'm not going to fall for this Miles Sanders thing. And, I, and look, if it kills me, there's <laughs> many weeks it kills me, and and it's always scary on a four game slate in a perfect game script. But I can't seem to talk myself into like uh, they just they have three guys they'll use as running back. J, uh, Jalen Hurts will take it if they're inside the five. It's just like very strange for me to try to play him. So that's the one thing I'd say is that even. And, and I, I think that Daniel Jones, just because the, the rushing upside is so high for him yeah. that I think that you, you got to consider him and, and and maybe the way you do it is play him with like, you're hoping the game stays close. Maybe you play him with Barkley and James or, or Slayton or something okay. like that. Okay. I, think, I think that's a viable route running back with Goddard. Unfortunately, Sanders would be the logical choice, but um, I think that I would go AJ Smith, then Devante, AJ Brown, then Devante Smith in this one. If I had to pick two of them, uh, Devante Smith, put a bigger numbers with, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, mustache man. <laughs> Why can't I think of his name right now? Their other quarterback, Minshew. Um, so, and and one thing is to keep a note, keep an eye on is that Quez Watkins, uh, Jalen Hurts tried him big for big plays quite a few times, a lot more than he was with Minshew. So I'm open to the idea of a you know a large field play on Quez Watkins. If you play Quez Watkins and Richie James, you can basically play who else you want elsewhere. And I don't think anyone's going to play with Quez Watkins. It's just it's a large it's it's a it's a long shot play that literally one one pass may be good enough to get you there because there just aren't that many thirty three hundred guys that that are really strong plays. I was getting the sum of him in my in the Sabres and Bills, so I was I'm glad that you kind of brought that up. The, yeah, the I think he's interesting. It, it kind of goes against my theory though of like having to play guys like that. But no, but but the thing that the only thing about guys like that is like he's he's a burner. Like he's he's a guy who can catch a long touchdown pass. Like it, and that's really what you're playing him for. And that and the fact that that you know that they will go for him. Like I mean, we we we've seen it before this season already with uh with him. It's it's not like my favorite play. It's just something I thought I'd throw out because you're going to get a two percent owned guy. And I always like to try to find those guys in these slates. All right, what do you want to talk about with Buffalo and Cincinnati? What do you love? Yeah, this this I'm I'm going to be a sucker on this one. I mean, I don't, I don't get this at all. I think this is like one of the easy overs that you can imagine. Ooh. And, and okay. I, 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 I don't. I wonder if I can get like seven to five odds or something like that um, on just the Cincinnati Buffalo just being more than the Kansas City Jacksonville game. You know, mm-hmm. I, don't know. Uh, I, I, I think the, the skill position guys in this freaking field. Between and I'm considering Davis like up there now, you know, like with Davis and oh, yeah. Davis, Josh Allen, not to mention Dawson Knox and Cincinnati with those freaking two dudes and and, and Burrow slinging this ball around, you know, I I I think this is going to be a great game, um, and I don't I really don't think that either team is going to be able to stop the other one. That's just my opinion. I know these teams play good defense sometimes, but um, I think this is I think this this is uh this is going to be one of those. <laughs> That's the best I can describe it. And I think this is the game you're supposed to you're supposed to attack. You're supposed to play Chase. You're supposed to play Higgins. You're supposed to play Burrow. You're supposed to play Allen. Uh, the receivers. I I we have no interest in these running backs. You know I don't I don't want to play Mixon. I don't want to play um, uh, Knox. Not Knox. You know Cook and Singletary. I think these quarterbacks are just going to sling the freaking ball around. And 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 and, and Allen could run one in. And I think this is probably my my favorite game. Um, just because again. Look, the Jacksonville KC game is good too, but I just don't know what I'm doing on the KC side. Cincinnati Buffalo, I just know what I'm doing. You know, so right, right. that's gonna be my it's gonna be my key game. I'm gonna probably have uh more exposure on this one than than the earlier, you know, than the uh than the Saturday. So that that's that's my thing. Yeah. Um so I do, I do think it's, you know, it's a good game. I may be, I might be a little bit like, I, I do, I think that I could see some scoring. I mean, it's a little bit, it's rainy and kind of nasty weather, but I don't think that matters all that much. The weird part is I, I don't find myself feeling like I, so you have a really, really tough matchup for Jamar Chase here. And 
that doesn't like he's the best. I, I really think like you could make an argument. He's he's one of the most talented receivers in the NFL. I don't know where you rank him. You, you, I wouldn't bother be bothered if he said one. I wouldn't be bothered if he said five. But he's it's just I don't know that I want to do that as much. And I, I kind of like the idea of going down for Higgins um, or Boyd or both and may, maybe maybe doing something that way. I also think on Buffalo side, like I do like Gabe Davis and the price. But like if, if if I avoid Stephon Diggs and and Jamar Chase, as scary as that might be, and probably mostly the Philly receivers, so most of the spend ups, I think you're going to be a little bit different already. Um, and and I don't mind that. I, I I'm a little higher on Mixon than you are, but I don't think it's like a, a must play or anything. I just think he can get work in the passing game too. The thing that always bothers me is the P Ryan aspect of it. But I think that I think I still think Mixon's a, str- a fine play. But I actually have Chase and Diggs not as my favorite receivers in this game. I have Davis and Higgins as my favorite receivers in this game. I'm, to- is- I'm totally down with that, by the way. Yeah, I'm t- I just was what I'm going to do probably. So, And then uh, if you want a cheap receiver, I think Hayden Hurst is a little bit – cheap tight end. Hayden Hurst I think is a little bit better than than Bellinger, and I think Dawson Knox is probably – yeah, I'll I'll, right I'll, play, I'll play I'll play Ingram thanks with her with Hertz. Yeah, but yeah, these are these are the cheaper options if you if you want right. to do a different build. But I I actually think this is a very viable two tight end week. I mention it every year. Um, these you get a lot of weird games. I won the big one one year with the uh, with the backup tight end in, in a lineup. It was only two games that day, but oh really? The backup tight end for uh, for Denver when Manning was the quarterback because uh, there was all the perception that Manning couldn't throw the balls. So I was like, okay, well, even if he can't throw the ball, he's, he's tight end. So he got, he got the tight end for two touchdowns, ended up winning everything, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is obviously the, these are all like, honestly, all of these games are, are I feel like really, really good games. We'll see about Casey and, and Jacksonville, but I'm still sort of on the idea of playing the Jacksonville KC game and using the skill guys elsewhere. Um, but, but I, I like the idea of that first game still quite a bit. All right. What are your, t- what's your take? Uh, by the, who do you like to win that game? Cause I I'm, I'm sort of flip-flopping on this one. I was very much until the thing happened with Hamlin that this Buffalo team is overrated and, and is, is, is really in danger. And obviously that, that proved to be true last week, considering they almost lost to the dolphins. Um, I, I really think that, 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 that Cincinnati is live. Um, I think they're very live and I don't, it feels like a lot of points. Um, so I, I guess I would say Cincinnati with the points, but I, I think the game is closer to a toss up for me. Yeah, I, I I like Cincinnati plus the points, but I like the over the maps. Yep, gotcha. All right, let's talk about Dallas and San Francisco. But there's a, there's a lot of people acting like this game already happened, that San Francisco already won it, and yet they're only three and a half point favorites. It's just kind of weird. Like everybody's, you know, loves they love themselves from San Francisco. What do you think of this game, Sheets? Dallas can be really annoying on defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and And the other thing I would say, is this is like, it's kind of like the uh it's like a weird thing because San, I think San Francisco can be really good on defense too obviously but they can sometimes be shaky on defense um I I think that uh given what I said about these other running backs I just think you're supposed to play McCaffrey and and win the position that that's 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 my take uh on 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 this for for openers um I'm looking at these other games and I just feel as though you could even play Barkley and him together mm-hmm. in the running back position if you want to do that. Because I think these other teams are just going to be slinging it. I, I don't. I just. I don't think that Jacksonville is going to be able to listen. If Jacksonville want, if, if they could get Etienne going, I mean, obviously that's what they prefer. You know what I mean? To like just jam it down KC's throat and kill time and whatever. And people have done that to KC. I just don't see that happening. And then. I, I'm just again I'm still at this running back position, and I just think that Cincinnati Buffalo they're not nobody's going to have time to run the ball there. I think they're just going to always be all just going to be always be passing. So I think McCaffrey is a really really strong play. Um, I just still don't know what. I, listen, it's hard enough for me to, fig, to figure out what to do between Pollard and, and Elliott anyway. Listen, obviously Pollard's the more dynamic guy, but they they just always want to give the ball to Elliott down the goal line. They just always do, and they want to bring him in at fourth, at third, and one. And this, 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 and they they have him in, you know, you know, relative to his talent to the other guy, uh, just probably like way too much, but whatever. And the fact that I can't figure them out generally, plus the fact that now against San Francisco, I'm just gonna have to fade them. Um, on the Dallas side, though, my favorite of the of I have two guys are Schultz and Gallup. Those are my two favorite receivers. Um, 
Gallup is just way too cheap and Schultz just catches the ball way too much. So, so those, those are, I'll, I'll fade lamb, whatever. Um, and, and those are my two favorites would be, would be Schultz and, and Gallup. And on the San Francisco receivers, I guess I said this before, and then Purdy proved me wrong. I like, I couldn't believe they're going to put the ball in Purdy's hands to, so to win these games, but if, what, what did he get? Fifty three fantasy points in his last game, or something <laughs> like that. God knows. I, Dallas is tough, though. You know, I don't. I don't know if they're gonna listen. They're gonna bring the bring the what's the name of Micah Parsons. They're gonna bring the freaking heat. Um, I I think San Francisco is gonna smartly try to like just get the ball in McCaffrey's hands. Maybe get some end arounds to to Debo, some slants to Ayuk or something like that. Maybe. But um, I think that the key in San Francisco is going to be the running game. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to so the running game meaning uh, McCaffrey and like maybe Kittle. You know what I mean? Like you want to play Kittle instead of Kelsey, for example. Like that's something you could do. And if you want to play that double tight end thing that you want to do, you play like Ingram with uh, or or both tight ends here. You play Schultz and Kittle together in this game or something like that. So that's my view. I don't I don't just see this as a wide receiver heavy game for San Francisco. Although like those guys are all really talented. Um, and from the Dallas side, I, my favorites, as I said, are Schultz and, and Noah Brown, uh, not Noah Brown. Ooh, maybe it should be Noah Brown, but uh, Michael Gallup. Yeah. I, I understand a lot of what you're saying. I have a, a little bit of a different take. So it's kind of fun when we, when we have that yeah. because, okay. So San Francisco is the best run defense in, in football. Basically Dallas is probably the second or third best run defense in football. So the way to win should be through the air. And when the when that's the part that's going to be under owned with this much talent, I'll take a chance to go right back to it again. Um, I have, no, I mean, yes, it's it sounds weird to like want to stack San Francisco against Dallas in a, on a slate like this, just in a vacuum. But when you look at the talent, okay, and the prices of the receivers, like I don't care, like Debo Samuel at fifty nine hundred, that's insane. It's absolutely insane. Why is he the, the difference between him and and, and Chase and, and and Diggs is minimal? I understand the situation is different, but take the price discount. And, and then also you're going to have, you know, lower ownership than some of those guys. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I feel that I feel, I like, I like, I like, I like quite a bit, maybe better than my, my large field play would, you know, if you're going to get really weird with it, playing Juwan Jennings in a lineup or two, um, that's just my super weird one, but I can get behind the Kittle thing too. Although Dallas really good against tight ends. The main thing that I keep learning though, as we talk through this slate is that I really like tight ends this week. <laughs> like, cause I, I'm with you on Schultz. I like, I love, I love Schultz. I love Goddard. And I love um, Ingram. And then I'm, I'm, and then on top of it, I also am, I'm, I'm open to, to to Knox, and I'm open to uh, to, to Kittle. So I, I think that's one thing to do. And I think that my favorite stacks might just be, and maybe it's just the ownership that's driving me. I kind of like the Purdy San Francisco stack. The way to beat Dallas, they're one of the worst teams through the air. They give up tons of big plays, and 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 also the 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 way to fade McCaffrey, who I by the way have as as one of the priority plays. So I'm not arguing that McCaffrey is not a good play. But you're, you got to remember, Debo Samuel is going to be getting some of those balls near the end zone, too. He's going to get some carries. Eli Mitchell is going to get some carries. It's not necessarily going to be all McCaffrey. McCaffrey can do it catching the ball out of the backfield in this game, I think. But they also have a lot of good tight, like a lot of good wide receiver matchups. So I actually think there is an argument you can fade him because of that. Um, I also think that because of, you know, like I said, the, the San Francisco defense, the Dallas running game is definitely less interesting to me. But I kind of like the idea of making my main stacks the two lowest owned, which would be Purdy with the Giants and, and more so I like the Jacksonville with uh, Lawrence. And then you fill in the pieces with the, you know, one of the Giants cheap wide receivers. Um, you fill in the pieces with, as you mentioned, Michael Gallup, um, you, you know, guys like T Higgins, uh, Gabe Davis. Um, I still think Kelsey, you could get in if you want to go with those stacks. Um, and then I also like the double tight end builds. That's sort of my general outlook, but I'm going to, I, it's not my priority to build the Purdy stack, like one of my biggest buy-ins, but by the end of the, by the time it's all said and done, I, 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 that may very well be what I do. It also gives me a little bit of flexibility sheets. Like you mentioned, if I like playing the other games and I've got everything on fire through day one, I can, I can, maybe I can find enough room to switch over to Josh Allen and Gabe Davis instead of a Purdy double stack or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it should be a really fun weekend. Um, as usual, I've got a, a tough, tough weekend to, to 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 have free time, but I'm going to try to try to be live for Sunday at least. I don't know if I can do this Saturday because I have my kid in LA, so it's going to be a little tricky for Saturday. But I, I can do Sunday before lock. And as she said, if if I'm able to, I'm going to try to play both slates um, if I can. 
Yeah, I am not going to be around for Saturday for Locke. I'm going to be out uh, pretty much all day Saturday. Um, Sunday. Uh, yeah, I should I should be around for Sunday. I mean, it'll actually be kind of a cool Sunday before lock because, you know, we'll get to see, okay, how we're doing for the Saturday. And yeah. We'll get to plan and stuff like that. So, yeah, I actually, I'm going to make sure I'm around for that. When is the Sunday games, though? Let me just at, see at, at 3 Eastern. So the first game is not till 3. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll make that work then. I'll make it live. Yeah, maybe we go live around 1030, uh, 130 Eastern. Yeah, or, yeah, that's fine because I bet you there's NBA later that day also, so I'll be able to look at that too. Perfect. Um, Okay, sounds great. All right, good luck to everybody. It's going to be a fun weekend.